Hi everybody, this is Dr. Kat Fleece from Central New Mexico Community College. We're going to start here with the integumentary system and it's assumed that you have a pretty good foundation in histology by now, particularly have some knowledge of the epithelial and connective tissues because that is what our integumentary system is primarily built on. By definition, an organ system must be made up of organs that work together. And that is the case in the integumentary system as well. The biggest organ in the integumentary system is the skin, which is made up of this epithelial layer here in the light beige, and then the fleshy colored layer here, um, respectively called the epidermis and the dermis. You've already heard of these two terms. Now embedded particularly in the dermis, we see additional organs, much smaller, and we can refer to them as accessory structures or accessory organs. And so here we see the little hair follicles, the sweat glands, for instance. We also see some oil glands. And then we can't forget that the nails are also considered to be accessory structures of the integumentary system. In addition, we find distributed throughout the, the integumentary system various components of the nervous system, by the way. All these yellow uh, structures here, typically AMP books draw uh, parts of the nervous system in yellow. So those, many of those are various types of sensory receptors that we will learn more about later on in the chapter and much more when we get to the end of this semester. Remember that we can also refer to the skin as the cutaneous membrane. That's what you were introduced to in the section on the epithelial membranes or even just the integument. So by now you know that the skin is made up of an epithelial layer called the epidermis and a connective tissue layer that we refer to as the dermis. The epidermis is made up of stratified squamous epithelial tissue. You already knew that too. And then we're going to see in just a little bit what the dermis is made up of. It's actually made of two different connective tissues. Now notice that as we get um, past the dermis, so only the epidermis and the dermis are considered part of the skin, so deeper to the dermis, we have a very fatty layer that is referred to as the hypodermis, or we can also call it the subcutaneous layer. I'm kind of running out of room here because of my menu that I don't think you guys can see, but the subcutaneous layer, I abbreviated the term uh, layer somewhat. Okay. Um, yeah, so let's take a look at a slide, a microscope slide of these two layers. In this microscope slide, the size or the length of the white bar represents where we find our um, epithelial tissue, our stratified squamous epithelial tissue, and I'll just write all over it here, which we collectively as a layer refer to as the epidermis. Now it's always easy to recognize because the deeper layers, as we'll see there are sub layers of the epidermis I should say, we'll learn about them. They look very cellular which is typical for epithelial tissue while as we get closer to the apical surface the cells look very dead. So we're going to learn about this typical look of the epidermis. Now the, the extent of the blue bar here shows you where the dermis is located and although very difficult to, to recognize on this particular slide, uh, you guys know enough that um, you, you know enough about both epithelial tissues and connective tissues uh, to, to be aware of the fact that the connective tissue that sits that has to sit deep to our epithelial tissue is going to have to be, areolar connective tissue, right? So I'm already kind of introducing you to some of the tissues that we find, <clears throat> excuse me, in the dermis. So 
The epidermis looks very cellular, the dermis doesn't look very cellular at all, and that's how you can distinguish the, these two layers. So in the next video we'll take a closer look at the cells that we find in the epidermis and also those sublayers, those strata that we find in the epidermis.